Shalom, everybody. Welcome to this week's Journey Through Torah. This week we are in Parsha Naso, or Lift Up, or Elevate. We find a, a continuing census of the of the tribes and the people of Israel. Specifically, we're talking about the Leviim because they were not counted in with the uh, other census of the people of Israel. The Levites were counted separately. And so one of the things we find in this Parsha, an important thing we get into, is servanthood. The tribe of Levi they were subdivided into family groups and these groups would serve together. Um, interesting that this word for serve uh, is also the word for a servant. And it's also the word used for the Yom HaKippurim service, the Avodah. So we serve and worship. These words are related. Uh, they're, they're the same thing. So when we serve Yahweh, we are worshiping him. Now, here's the thing that we get into. The tribes, they didn't get to apply for their positions. They didn't get to apply for the things that they wanted. Yahweh says, we're going to have the tabernacle, Aaron and his sons. They're going to be the Kohanim. And then the, tri the rest of the tribe of Levi, they will work within the confines of the Mishkan. And in the order, of, as the uh, Kohanim have said, this is how it's going to fall. This is the function. This is how things are going to do. In other words, you may have heard this term, they were voluntold. <laughs> they weren't really volunteers, but yet they were instructed what they were going to be doing. They're, they're saying, you will volunteer for this job. Thank you for your volunteering, right? In other words, there were things that needed to be done, and there were tasks that needed to be said. There were things that had to happen, and there were certain people that said, this is your job, this is your job, this is your job, and they didn't get to say, oh, no, I don't want that job. No, Yahweh says, this is what's needed, and I want you to do it. This was a task at hand that was specifically given by Yahweh to specific people, okay? And so they were, they were working here, but this was an, an important task. They were to carry out their task fervently. They were to carry them out wholeheartedly. They were to carry them out with honor and respect and diligently, because if they didn't, somebody could die. This was not just uh, things of... of saying, okay, well, somebody messed up, let's fix it. No, depending on what it was, someone could have lost their life because they failed to protect and guard over the things that were holy and the tasks that were provided to them. This is why the, the Leviim and the Kohanim, why they were, were instructed for years before they were actually put into service. They had to be trained in how to handle the holy things and trained in how to handle this. So, what do we learn from this? When we come to the kingdom of Yahweh, when we repent and we come to serve him, we're like, God, I want to serve you. But then he says, great, I want you to serve me and worship me and honor me. But in part of the serving me, you're going to have to learn how to serve your brother. You're going to have to learn how to serve in this capacity. And that is a big test for us, isn't it? I uh, say, well, God, I'm willing to serve you. Uh, I, I, I'm willing to serve and I'm willing to do all these great mighty things. And here's the list of the things that I'm willing to do for you. Uh, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't say, well, God, I'm, I want to serve you, but only where I want to serve you. How about Yahweh says, this is the task that's needed and I want you to do it. See, we learn to rely on him. We learn to do these things. It's not a matter of I'm only going to serve where I want to serve. Well, then are we really serving him or are we just doing what we want? There's a lot to learn from that. And there's a lot that can, that can come out of that. We, we surrender ourselves to Yahweh. Do we not? That's part of repentance. We repent and he redeems us. Redeem means purchase. So we surrender ourselves to Yahweh. And when we come to him, you do not negotiate the terms of your surrender. If we come to Yahweh, we surrender to him wholeheartedly. And so he says, this is what you do. You come to me. This is great. I want you to learn my word. I want you to learn how to walk in my ways. I want you to learn to discern the holy things. And this is the task that I have for you. And we can't say, oh, no, I don't want to do that. See, you get into a scenario where, you know, the potter and the clay kind of issue. You know, how can the, how can the, 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 the clay say to the one who fashioned it and, and molded it to say, no, why did you make me this way? I don't want to do this, right? No. See, again, when we surrender, we need to learn to submit our hearts and our lives to Yahweh as well. Yeshua puts it this way, John 13, verses 13 to 17. 
You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right. I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. For if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. See that? It's not just about knowing these things, it's about doing it as well. And what did Yeshua give the example of? If you love him, you're going to serve him by serving one another, by helping to provide for the needs of those that are around you as well. It's like this. We're all given to one another to serve in some kind of capacity. We identify as a people of Yahweh, but we need to see the individuals within the community and strive to build one another up to help make our community stronger. Another way to put this is different people are gifted in different areas. Um, Could this be that Yahweh is wanting us to put these people in certain areas where he has has given them that gift? Now, in the midst of that, you are going to have some people be like, no, this is what I want to do. And it's like, okay, that's what you want to do, but this is what's needed. What are you, what are you going to do in that situation? Are you going to say, no, I'm only going to serve if I can do what I want to do? Or, okay, well, that's what's needed. I just want to help. Let me help. You know? Um, many, many times we get into scenarios where we're, we're doing things, the menial tasks, the things that not everybody wants to do, right? Yeah, some of you may have had have stories of of going to communities, and then one of the first things they want you to do is to can you help clean the restrooms before and after service? Guess what, guys? There were many times, you know, uh, people being out or sick or traveling or whatever the case may be. We were shorthanded. We're we're you know a, a smaller ministry. You know, we're not huge. So guess what? I would go help. I would I would go and clean the and help clean the restrooms and do the stuff and and scrub the toilets and mop and wipe stuff down and do you know why? Because it didn't matter who did it. It just needed to be done, and that's the point. Um, you know, are 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 we willing to do what needs to be done regardless of what it is? It just needs to be done. So my heart is to serve. I'll serve wherever that's needed. It's not a matter of serving to be seen. It's a matter of serving where the need is and actually it's better off a lot of times if it's not seen if we're only serving to be seen then that reveals the heart behind the serving isn't it we're not serving god we're serving ourselves because we want to be seen doing it that's it guys that's that's a a revealing of ourself like this hebrews 6 10 for god is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown in his name and serving the saints as you still do god sees he knows He's the only one that needs to know. Okay. Uh, Matthew 23, 11 and 12. The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Do you want your reward here and now? Or are you working to the eternal things? That's it. Uh, Matthew 10 verses 42 to 45. Yeshua called, called them and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. So all that in the service, and we are to take the service wholeheartedly, take it to heart, and do it joyfully, cheerfully, and, uh, and to do it unto Yahweh. Anything that we're doing for Yahweh, it's for Yahweh. It's not really for anyone. It's for him. If we're doing it for him, then is really any task menial? Is really anything he's anything he's asking us to do? Is that beneath us? No. No. We're doing it because it represents how we honor him. Right? So into this parsha. I know we're just now getting into it, right? Numbers chapter four, verses 24 to 27, we read about the Gershonite family. So it says, this is their task and working, carrying burdens. They are to carry the curtains of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, its covering, the outer covering, the porpoise hide, the curtains for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the curtains surrounding the courtyard and the altar, the curtain for the entrance, the ropes, all the equipment used in its operations. They are to do all that needs to be done with these things. The sons of the Gershonites are to do all their task, whether carrying or doing other work, according to the word of Aaron and to his sons. You are to assign to them all that is their responsibility to carry. So what do the curtains and the coverings do? What was the function of the, of this tribe? What was the function of this family? 
Boundary control. <laughs> carrying the things that make boundaries. Carrying the things that make the separation. It's one of the things that we learn it's important is, is, is a separation between the holy and the common and to protect the holy things. There has to be this separation. You know, you did not come to the tabernacle to defile it. Yahweh says that there would be death to those who came to defile the tabernacle. So you did not come to defile that which is holy. And, and, and so as you approach, Yahweh says, if you submit to him, he'll make you holy. He'll cleanse you. He'll bring you into his presence. But if we come with uh, ill intent, then he's going to judge that. And that's not where we want to be either. And one of the big responsibilities of all the Leviim were to teach and distinguish the differences between clean and clean and holy and common and to teach Israel the differences. It wasn't just something the priesthood was to know. It's something that Israel was to know. Why? So that they would know how to walk in it, and so that they would know uh, if they had become defiled, that, that they could make the appropriate uh, choices to be cleansed, right? So Leviticus 10, verses 10 and 11, it says, You were to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean, and you were to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that Yahweh had spoken to them by Moses. Ezekiel 44, 23, They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the common, and show them how to distinguish between the unclean and the clean. So this, as they were, what they were doing, they were to protect and to guard the sanctuary. The word for sanctuary is mikdash. Mikdash is from the word uh, kadash, kodesh, something that is holy. So it is a holy place. So a consecrated thing, the sanctuary, this is the set apart place for Yahweh. This is the set apart dwelling where he says he's going to meet with us. So Yahweh is set apart. And as we see ourselves as set apart and we come to Yahweh, what promise do we have here? We have a picture of the Mishkan as we approach him as the holy set-apart place where he dwells and we are a set-apart people, there is a promise that as we approach, we are to see in our life. And uh, I want to point it out this way. Uh, it's all learning to work together, so we're not bringing divisions and strife and contention into the house of Yahweh either, right? So as we approach, we do this unified, and we approach his tabernacle, Mishkan, from the word Shekhan, which means to dwell, right? But uh, it's interesting if we take the meanings of the letters uh, the representations of the letters and, and the word Mishkan, we got to see a picture. Mim is representing waves and chaos. Shin is a pressing or a destroying or, or a tearing. Uh, a cuff is a is it like the palm of a hand, and it's uh, it's given like a covering, a safety, and a protection. And then Nun is the life or the quickening of life. So in this phrase Mishkan, we can see to destroy chaos and preserve life. So when we come into the presence of Yahweh, He will destroy the chaos in our in our in us and preserve life. In other words, if we submit to him, then that chaos will be destroyed and we can have life preserved within us. And then we will work, function, and worship all within that. Guys, when you come to Yahweh, you are counted for service of the Most High. It's not like, okay, now we've come to Yahweh and now go on and back and do your own thing. No. Once you've come to Yahweh, you are now in the service of the Most High. You are part of his people. Yahweh is Zavaot. He is the Lord of hosts. So you are part of this Zavaot. You are part of these hosts. You are part of these many people. In other words, you are now to take this experience that Yahweh has given in you and to carry this with you wherever you go. Much like carrying the curtains and the coverings and all these things, you're carrying these uh, these covering wherever you are, that you are this covering for the presence of Yahweh. See, it's not just a matter of you're being set apart from the world, as it is as well, you're being set apart to Yahweh. You're being set apart from the world because you're being set apart to Him. There's a completion there. It's not just come out of the world, now just be in limbo. No, you come out of the world, now you come to Him. See, and that completes the deliverance that He desires for you right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17 says, don't you know that you people are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? So if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him for God's temple is holy and you yourselves are that temple. Again, we're talking boundary maintenance, right? Uh, not not uh, bringing uh, unclean to the holy things, right? And you are a place for Yahweh to dwell, and you are to carry his presence with you. He is dwelling with you no matter where you go. And that should affect how you live your life and how you do the daily things of life as well. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, Don't you know that your body is a temple for the Ruach HaKodesh who lives inside you, whom you receive from God? The fact is you don't belong to yourselves, for you were bought at a price, so use your body to glorify God. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 16 to 18 
relating to these things, but also quoting from other places in the Tanakh. We see in verse 16, what agreement can there be between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will house myself in them and I will walk among you. I will be their God and they will be my people. We get these ideas uh, being quoted from Leviticus 26, 11 and 12. It says, I will put my tabernacle among you. Literally says within you. I will put my tabernacle within you and not reject you. And I will walk within you and be your God and you will be my people. In uh, Ezekiel 37, verse 27 and 28, it says, My tabernacle shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And when my sanctuary shall be in their midst forever, the nation shall know that I, Yahweh, sanctifies Israel. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, Therefore Adonai says, Go out from their midst, separate yourselves, don't touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Interesting, because here we have another picture of don't touch what's unclean (gasps) in the New Testament. (laughs) Not going there, but uh, definitely just pointing it out, though that it does matter and about the clean and the unclean in, in the Brit Hadashah. Okay. Uh, so that, this is quoting from Isaiah 52, 11, where it says, leave, leave, get out of there. Don't touch the unclean, get out from inside it and be clean. Who you, who carries Adonai's temple equipment, you who carry the, the implements of Yahweh, the things of Yahweh, the place of his tabernacle, the things to assemble the tab- tabernacle, you as parts of his tabernacle, all of this, you come out from among them and be separate because Yahweh has made you holy. Don't make yourself unclean and do walk with him. Okay. Second Corinthians six, verse 18 says, in fact, I will be your father and you'll be my sons and daughters. Says, I don't know. Oh, again, we see this principle in second Samuel seven, 14 and 15, where it says, I will be a father for him and he will be a son for me. If he does something wrong, I will punish him with a rod and blows just as everyone gets punished. Nevertheless, my grace will not leave him. As I took it away from Shaul, whom I removed from before you again, uh, Yahweh chastens whom he loves, right? Uh, we also see in Isaiah 43, verses 6 and 7, it says, I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, don't hold them back. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who bears my name, whom I created for my glory, I formed him, yes, I made him. Again, all the people who are called by his name, all those people that are set apart, we are to be called together into a people of Yahweh. See, we all have our roles. We all have different things we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to work against each other, but we're supposed to work with each other. Okay. We all have different things, different functions. It doesn't mean that anyone is better than anybody else or anyone is any worse than anyone else, but we have different roles. We have different functions. And if someone is trying to work outside of their role and inside somebody else's function, It's not going to be as efficient or as good as it could be. And uh, so we constantly have this battle going on within the body if we are not doing what we should be doing, working in the roles that Yahweh has put in our midst. We're constantly trying to work outside of those roles. Our body is rebelling within itself and uh, it's not going to function properly. We see examples in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. Where it says he gave some people as emissaries, prophets, proclaimers of the good news, some as shepherds and teachers. Their task is to equip God's people for the work of service that builds the body of the Messiah until we all arrive at the unity implied by trusting and knowing the Son of God at full manhood, at the standard of maturity set by the Messiah's perfection. We will then no longer be infants tossed about by the waves and blown along by every wind of teaching at the mercy of people clever in devising ways to deceive. Instead, Speaking the truth in love, we will in every respect grow up into him who is the head, the Messiah. Under his control, the whole body is being fitted and held together by the support of every joint, with each part working to fulfill its function. This is how the body grows and builds itself up in love. See that? When we love Yahweh, we're going to love one another, we're going to work together, and then we're going to uh, let each of the people who have the gifts or the calls, you know, the things that Yahweh has imparted to them to do what they need to do. But they're not going to do it from a place of pride. They're not going to do it from a place of being arrogant. They're going to do it with the heart of, of equipping others to do what they're supposed to do. And that's how we're all work together. Okay. Uh, Luke 19, 17, again, Yeshua is good, well done, good servant. You have been faithful in little, so now I'll give you authority over 10 cities. If we're faithful in the little things, then more is given in that, right? So a lot of times, Yahweh may want us to do big things, but he's not going to immediately give us these things. He's going to test us in the smaller things first so that we can see our heart and see the things and, and make corrections and do all that so that when he entrusts us with the bigger things, we're not causing damage or causing harm to people, okay? Uh, Luke 16, 10 to 12 
One who is faithful in little is also faithful in much. One who is dishonest in little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, how will he entrust you to true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is in others, how will you give to that which is your own? Again, faithful in the little things, faithful in more. Uh, times of testing, trusting, and proving, we're all given this. They all happen, but Scripture says to know, know them that labor among you. This is why in our community, when people come in um, and, and, and they want to help, they want to serve, they want to do things, there's some things they could get in and do. But no one who, who just comes in and we've just met you, you're not going to have a place of, of uh, any kind of authority in an assembly where you're teaching people or speaking into people's lives or trying to help give direction or uh, teach, uh, you know, the, 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 the word, the Torah. I mean, we need to know you. We need to know who you are, what your heart is. Um, are we willing to work together in these things? And, and, uh, you may have some great and awesome things that Yahweh has told you. Great. We'd love to hear them, but let's get to know you as well. Okay. It's much like when the scripture talks about witnesses, they need to be credible witnesses. All right. <laughs> we need to, we need to be able to trust. And so know them that labor among you, right? First Thessalonians 5, 11 to 15 says, encourage one another, build one another up just as you're doing. We ask you, brothers, respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. In Luke 6, verse 39 and 40, Yeshua says, can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. See that? We're learning to be like him, which means we have to change. Okay, we're not trying to make him into our image. No, we are being fashioned into his image. So as we learn, we change. And as we we serve, we're going to learn. As we serve, we're going to see new things. As we humble ourselves, Yahweh is going to lift you up, right? Uh, 1 Timothy 4, 6, and 7. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Messiah Yeshua, being trained in the words of the faith and of good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself in godliness. Hebrews 5, verse 12 and 14 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. See that? Before we go in to teach or do anything like that, there's a training and a discerning, and that takes submitting ourselves, you know, being a disciple, learning and, and uh, learning to work together in a community and, and, and learning from one another and, and, see, and imparting the heart of the Father, serving and all of these things coming in together. Okay. And all of this is given as our relationship with Yahweh, but our relationship with one another. See this, this, this book, Bamidbar, it starts with an emphasis on relationship to the tabernacle and a relationship with the people of God. So we're all part of this body. We all have our roles. We all have our functions and we're not looking to compete with one another. We're not looking to try to take somebody else's role. We're not trying to, to try to do something that Yahweh didn't ask us to do just because that's what we want. No, we're trying to work for the good and the betterment of the people of Yahweh. Psalm 110 verse 3 says, Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power and holy garments from the womb of the morning. Uh, the, the dew of your youth will be yours. The NASB puts it this way. Your people will volunteer freely in the day of your power. Much like a uh, portion through Ma. Moshe said, these are the things that we need to build the tabernacle and those whose hearts you pull, pulled them, draw them, those whose hearts were to do so then came and brought and gave what was needed to do so. So the question is this, are we willing to be used in a role that is unseen? Are we willing to be used in roles that people don't see? Think about that. Are we willing to do something just because it needs to be done? It doesn't matter who sees it or who doesn't see it. James 4.17 Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, to him it is sin. Galatians 6 9 says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. James 1 22 says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. We do because it is the heart of Yahweh to do. Because somebody has to do it, so let it be us, right? Ephesians 6 5 through 8, bond servants, 
Obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Messiah. Not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Messiah, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as the Lord and not to man, knowing that whether good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bond servant or is free. In other words, even your boss, your employer, even these people, even the people that you work for, even the people that are over as you're volunteering and doing things, serve them as you would serve Messiah Yeshua, because that's what you're doing. You're being an example to these people in serving them by, by serving Messiah Yeshua and how you serve them. Your heart, your attitude, uh, you wanting to do a good job, all of that. Okay, so as we come together, understand, yes, there are gifts and there are things that Yahweh gave us for the benefit of the, of the whole in the community, but they're not given by you. They're given by Yahweh as he wills, when he will, how he wills, how often he wills, everything. Okay, it's all up to him. Okay, and if, and if, and if all of these, if the gifts are given in this manner, then so are the tasks and the responsibilities and the duties. So are the things that, that we need to be doing in this way as well. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says, All these work to the one and self-same spirit, dividing every man severally as he will. So the question again, are we willing to serve where we are needed? Or do we desire somebody else's place and somebody else's role? Remember, not Av and Avihu. They worked outside of what they were consecrated and anointed to do, and they died because of it. They went to bring strange fire before the Lord. They went to bring this incense in there, and it was Aaron's job to burn that incense. It was not their place to do so. And so they, they did not sanctify the name of Yahweh because they did not work within what they were anointed to do so. Uh, we also see the effects of this behavior thought process when we go to the Korah episode. When we re go, go a little forward and we read about Korah, we see uh, some of this attitude being there as well. Colossians 3, 23-25 says, Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord, for you serve Yeshua Mashiach. Be, uh, but he that does wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done, for there is no respect of persons. You can't say, well, I don't want to do this because they're not right, they're not holy, they're mean, they're cruel, whatever. Um, Yahweh knows. He will take care of that. You are not their judge. He is. Okay, so again, when you're serving, it's not about what they're doing as much as it is, what are you doing? What is your response? How are you handling this? What is your heart and attitude in the midst of all of this? Are you being an example of Yahweh? 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3 says, So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and evil and slander. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16, just like the Holy One who called you, he says, be holy in yourselves and everything that you do. For it is written, Kedoshim, you shall be, for I am Kadosh. Be holy because I am holy. We serve him, we are set apart to him, and we are holy because he is holy and because we love him, we serve him, we honor, we worship him. But we do this as well by love the Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. How do we love our neighbor as yourself? That's what this portion's about, serving. And uh, so this is how we get in and we show the heart of the Father, okay? Well, guys, that's all I have for you in this portion. So um, I pray this has been an encouragement to you. I pray this has been encouraging, challenging, and a blessing, okay? And if it has, then please share on whatever avenue or venue that you watch or listen these. Uh, help, get this, help get the word out there. If it's been a blessing to you, it'll probably bless somebody else, right? So help that. And if it has been a blessing to you, then please also consider making a donation to help us continue to, uh, to produce these, uh, these teachings to help get them out there. And, and you are the way to make that happen. Okay. So guys, until next time, be blessed, be a blessing and Shalom. Mm -hmm.